Good day, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is October 9th, 2010. I hope you guys are all having a great weekend. This uh, first article up for the War on Terror, Liberty, and Sovereignty News is from USA Today, and it's titled Uncertainty Over U.S. Plans as War Enters 10th Year. And it says, it's go for broke time in Afghanistan. The war enters its 10th year Thursday. Well, it already did, but key players hedging their bets, uncertain whether the Obama administration is prepared to stay for the long haul, move quickly to an exit and an increasingly unpopular conflict, or something in between. Let me move down here, and it says, Pakistan, America's nominal ally, says it's fighting insurgents, but it still tolerates al-Qaeda and Af Afghan Taliban militants hiding out on its soil, out of reach of U.S.-led NATO ground forces. It goes on to tell us what we already know, which is public support for the war is slipping in the United States and Western Europe. It says that the Netherlands have, been, uh, have already pulled out, and they were the first NATO country to do so, so the Canadians are next. And the next article up is Afghans blame U.S. forces for violence. It says, uh, as the U.S.-led war in Afghanistan enters its 10th year, Afghans blame foreign forces for the violence and insecurity in their country. It says a new report based on dozens of interviews and focus group sessions in seven Afghan provinces show that the majority of Afghans mistrust U.S.-led forces. Quote, the Trust Deficit Report from the Open Society Foundation says that this lack of confidence is due to high civilian casualties and low security. It says Afghans believe that the U.S. policy change in the country has by no means protected the civilian population. It says the report comes amid growing anti-U.S. Sent sentiments and public pessimism about the outcome of the war. A former top Afghan official says it's impossible for foreign forces to gain the people's confidence. Quote, the problem is that they are the U.S. led forces, spending especially the American expenditure more in the military side as far as the rehabilitation of the country is concerned. They're doing it through their own companies, and there's too much corruption from these companies, former Afghan Prime Minister told Press TV. This next article is from The Raw Story, and it's titled, U.S. Contractors Hire Taliban Warlords, Iranian Spies, to provide security, says a report, contractors working for the Pentagon, quote, funneled U.S. tax dollar or taxpayer dollars to Afghan warlords and strongmen linked to murder, kidnapping, and bribery, as well as uh, to Taliban and anti-coalition activities, uh, end quote, says a congressional report released to Thursday, sorry, a year-long investigation into private contractors in Afghanistan carried out by the Senate Armed Services Committee found, among other things, a contractor that had two alleged Iranian spies on its payroll and another contractor who hired two rival Taliban-linked warlords, only to see one kill the other in an ambush. The report, PDF, uh, whatever, which looked at 125 defense con contracts over three years, provides further evidence that the coalition war effort in Afghanistan may be becoming a lucrative source of financing for the very groups uh, the coalition is fighting. Well, I think a lot of us already know that. It's just I'm reading this because, well, um, you know, it's uh, when, when it's out there and it's reported. Uh, you might as well cover it. It says claims that security contractors have been paying bribes to the Taliban have been around for the better part of the year, and that's they're talking about uh, uh, what I've I've talked about in recent videos where the Taliban basically get paid by uh, U.S. forces. I don't believe they're NATO forces uh, to not be fired upon their uh, uh, convoys and that. And if they don't pay up, well, they get attacked by the Taliban. It says. Um, one contractor on which the new congressional report focuses ext extensively is Armor Group, which the report alleges uh, hired two rival warlords, one of them Taliban-linked, uh, to the guard in the Shinda Air Base in Harat Province. Armor Group referred to the two warlords as Mr. White and Mr. Pink in reference to the violent criminal characters in Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. So pretty much got the gist of that. The next article is Iran says U.S. Israeli or Israel nukes uh, a global threat. Says Secretary of Iran's Supreme National Security Council, uh, Saeed Jali, says nuclear arsenals in the U.S. and Israel are a threat to the world, calling for global nuclear disarmament. Next one up is 
uh, from Reuters, Pakistan reopens supply route for NATO forces. This is a big story in the mainstream media. They want everybody to know uh, it's been closed down uh, recently due to uh, protests by the Pakistanis uh, because of two guards or a couple guards that were killed um, by U.S. forces. It says uh, Pakistan will immediately reopen a vital supply route for NATO forces in Afghanistan 10 days after it was shut following a cross-border airstrike by NATO forces. The foreign ministry said on uh, Saturday the U.S. apologized to Pakistan on Wednesday for the September 30th raid that killed two Pakistani soldiers, raising hopes that Pakistan would reopen the uh, Torkham border crossing in the northwest transporting supplies for NATO-led International Security Assistance Force says militants in Pakistan have attacked convoys of tankers since the incursion to try to disrupt supplies. That's uh, true, yeah, there's another story that I have. Uh, yeah, 30 tankers and the latest such attack gunmen in the southwest set to uh, fire nearly 30 tankers parked at a roadside restaurant early on Saturday. Um, to me, it's uh, when stuff like this happens, uh, you just have to kind of question its authenticity. Um, because we just covered uh, this last article um, about the U.S. hiring Taliban warlords, so it's to me it's always um, it's always productive to try to keep other possibilities in mind as far as uh, this being uh, this causing kind of a, a need for more uh, NATO and U.S. forces in that area for a longer time. Uh, as of right now, I think. You know, our focus, not our focus, not my focus, I have no control over it, but uh, it's basically uh, private interest corporations that have control over the biggest corporation, the governments, uh, individual governments that uh, want to stay there and want to increase a presence there, so uh, that's probably what they'll get. And they're shifting away, obviously, from Iraq uh, and shifting away from Afghanistan into Pakistan and then, of course, comes the Syria and Iran. But uh, moving on next, it says, unauthorized U.S. attacks kill nine in Pakistan. Uh, two non-U.N. sanctioned U.S. drone attacks on Pakistan's North Waziristan region have killed at least nine people and wounded several others. Security officials say the drone fired two missiles on suspected uh, militant compounds along the Afghan border. One missile uh, hit the town of Mohammed Kiel, while the other targeted uh, data kill says the death toll is expected to rise as some of the injured are reportedly in critical condition. The U.S. has intensified its drone attacks on Pakistani's tribal areas in recent months. Some 160 people, most of them civilians, have been killed in such strikes in September. It says Islamabad has slammed the unauthorized attacks on its soil with Pakistan's foreign ministry spokesman. Uh, saying we believe that they are a counterproductive and also a violation of our sovereignty. Uh, the next one up here is uh, f from Press TV as well. It says, Kyrgyzstan prepares for landmark vote. The people of Kyrgyzstan go to the polls in a crucial election that could create the first parliamentary democracy in, Central, in the Central Asian region. It says, uh, final preparations are underway in Kyrgyzstan ahead of the parliamentary election on Sunday. Acting head of state uh, Rosa Atunbayeva has, occur, uh, has urged all ethnic groups to make sure they are represented in the upcoming parliament. These elections are a fateful importance of our people and state, she said. And uh, moving on here to an RT article, it says, uh, Kurzik elections leads to disintegration. It says a Central Asia expert, uh, Kislov, is sure that the elections in Kyrgyzstan are leading the republic to the Middle Ages and tribal wars rather than democracy. And it starts here and says, Kyrgyzstan will elect its parliament uh, on Sunday, October 10th. During the 20 years since independence, the republic has seen numerous dramatic events becoming impoverished and losing practically all the resources for its economic development. Currently, it's being torn apart by clan infighting disguised as political struggles, as well as a hatred for Uzbeks or the Uzbeks minority that is being whipped up by the drug mafia. And it goes down here, says, uh, this is pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. I always like to... Uh, cover this country, Kyrgyzstan, and the uh, surrounding areas, because I believe that um, the, the war on terror will eventually trickle over into Central Asia. So that's why I cover these. And I think that this is going to be one of the countries that are going to uh, uh, help that come about. It says the problems with the region in general 
and Kyrgyzstan in particular are as a result of what has been going on there for the past 20 years since the collapse of the Soviet Union, namely economic demodernization, social degradation, and the growing gap between the political, the fa uh, political facade and the real needs of the people. These tendencies are common to the entire region of Central Asia, except to a, to a degree Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan, which have oil and natural gas. It says, of course, in Kyrgyzstan, the decline is particularly striking. It was caused by the collapse of the Soviet Union, Kyrgyzstan rulers, and all players in the region, the U.S., China, and Russia. It says, in the Soviet Union, uh, actually, I'm going to move. This is uh, some pretty good information. You're just not going to get this. It says the United States likes to advertise its democratic values and encourage others to follow them. The two, quote, I like this, color revolutions, and quote, that means it's uh, intelligence run, uh, demonstrated that the Americans need nothing from the region except that they are. Uh, that they want to be able to have a military base there. In a way, it's their own way of demonstrating their strength to the entire region, including China and Russia, and that's what a lot of it has to do with, right? Uh, China, Russia, and then, uh, you know, basically the U.S. and the West. Um, it says, but the U.S. has made it clear that it won't help Kyrgyzstan get out of the hole. It won't go out of its way to repay Kyrgyzstan for the opportunity to have a base on its territory. The U.S. prefers to give a handout to Kyrgyzstan officials instead of implementing a systematic aid program. This money won't reach the people. Not a single congressman cares about the situation in Kyrgyzstan. So uh, moving on, this next one is violence flares at English Defense League uh, protests in uh, Leicester. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, sorry. Um, says a number of police and members of the public have been injured as protests from the English Defense League and rival a rival organization gathered in Leicester. They said at least 1,400 officers were drafted in from 12 other forces to deal with the demonstrators, the city's largest policing operation in 25 years. Uh, the next one is protesters greet uh, UN security convoy envoys in Sudan, hundreds of people in the Sudan have protested against a visit by United Nations Security Council, sorry, Council uh, ambassadors to their country. You can see uh, uh, Miss Rice there. Just kind of a creepy, eerie picture to me. Uh, these people have been, uh, I don't, they haven't had their autonomy for the longest time, thousands of years, and uh, <laughs> they're wearing the blue hats, you know, like they're going to help them. Now they're going to come and carry out eugenics, you know what I mean? Uh, that's that's the bottom line. They're gonna take your resources and financially enslave you and carry out eugenics. That's the name of the game. Ecuador extends state of emergency, and this is all due to what uh, recent uh, police revolt. That's what happens, and this is what could happen in the United States uh, down the road. Uh, once the only thing uh, that is protecting the bankers and all their thieving and the politicians and the corruption is going to be the cops. It's going to be the police enforcing political law. And if they're not paid off enough, like a mafia, if they're not paid off enough, well, then they're going to bite the hand that feeds them. And uh, so, yeah, and there'll be lots of people that will be flocking to fill those, uh, fill those ranks because there won't be any other jobs, really, besides government jobs. So... This next one up is Cubans, victims of U.S. state terrorism. Cuban President Raul Castro urges the U.S. to stop facilitating in its fight against terrorism. It says addressing the families of Cuban victims of terrorism on Wednesday, Castro said his country urged the U.S. Uh, President Obama to, quote, abide by his commitment to fight terrorism and act with determination and without double standards against those who, from the U.S. territory, have perpetuated and continue to perpetuate terrorist acts against Cuba, AFP reported. So, next one is from Haretz.com. Syria, Israel-U.S. fighter jet uh, deal destabilizes the region. Speaking at Arab League summit in Libya, Syrian um, foreign minister expresses disappointment at uh, Natianu's decision not to extend the settlement freeze. And these are the F-35 joint strike fighters that were uh, I covered a couple months ago. Uh, they're being purchased by Israel from the U.S. Uh, French Council endorses burqa ban. French, uh, France's Constitutional Council has finally approved a controversial law which bars women from wearing face covering veils, burqa, or nabik in public areas. Don't necessarily agree with that, but one day prior to 10 10 10, uh, prime time for false flag terrorist attack, counter terror operation targets bus station. And uh, this is in Atlanta. Federal agents launched a counterterrorism operation in Metro Atlanta for the third time in 10 days, inspecting every inch of the downtown Atlanta bus station. Uh, this one is lawsuit alleges uh, kids were abused at Florida lockup. Uh, says teenage uh, teenage uh, inmates were sexually abused, 
and uh, for us to go hungry, endure hot and moldy conditions and sleep on the floor. Running out of time here, Kent State tape indicates altercation and pistol fire preceded National Guard shooting audio. This guy was basically being paid by the FBI. And bullying laws threaten free speech. Thank you.